Hello, this is Professor Dan Kernler again of Elgin Community College. This is another one in my statistics series. This one we're going to look at bivariate data, but this time with qualitative data. Let's get to it. All right, for this video, we're going to focus on a data set we haven't spent a lot of time looking at before, and that is the school discipline data set. Uh, this one, I'll put the link in the description. It's um, a data set from a large uh, suburban Midwestern school district, and there are a few variables there. You can see we have grade, gender, race, ethnicity, the socioeconomic status. This is about school lunches. Do they get reduced or free school lunches, or can their family afford to pay for their lunches? Then there's a discipline. This means did they receive at least one referral to the office that school year and then there's exclusionary discipline did they have a discipline where they had to stay out of school for at least one day that particular school year first thing we want to do is to create a contingency table this is under stat tables and then contingency and if you want to look at the relationship between two variables there's no big um, decision here you can choose whichever one you want about which one is rows which one is columns i think for this one i want to look at um, how the the race or ethnicity varies so i'm going to do the race or ethnicity as my rows and then my discipline whether it's yes or no at least one that year as my columns and that table looks like this the problem with counts like this is you can't really see if there's a difference because there's a different total number of Hispanic or Latinx versus black or white. And so you can't really look at counts. What you need is some percentages. What we want to make is called a conditional distribution. So let's look at the proportion that uh, have received a discipline referral and let's do it by race or ethnicity. What that means is for each row, we want to know the percent that are in that column. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and options edit and we're going to display the row percent. We're going to display the row percent for that. Now, if you're one of my students or you're making a report, you're using this as part of a presentation, you want to make this a lot easier to see. So the first thing we're going to do is just show the percents. Now, we don't need the total. We know the total is 100%. And then no one needs hundredths of a percent here. So we could round to the nearest percent or maybe the tenth of a percent. And this just makes it much easier to see and to focus on where there are differences. So what this is, again, this is the different race or ethnic groups and it's the proportion that have received at least one discipline referral, you would expect if all groups have the same behavior and are treated the same, that that percent that receive at least referral is the same for all the groups. And what this table shows for you is that it clearly is not. So this table again is called the conditional distribution of discipline. So, so it's showing the distribution of yes or no by race or ethnicity. And so it's giving you the distribution of discipline, whether what percent are yes or no, and it's grouping it by race or ethnicity. If we look at this first row, this means that of students who have two or more races on their form when they did the school application, 65.7% had no discipline referrals that year, and then the remaining 34.3% did have at least one referral. And then the same goes true for all the other groups. And what this table does for you is it lets you look at particular groups. In this case, the black students and the Hispanic Latinx students, those pop out at you as having much higher proportions that are yes, higher than certainly the white students or the Asian students. Um, and that's what the conditional distribution for you does for you. It lets you look at and look for differences between groups. And we've actually done a graph about this before. It's a side-by-side -side bar graph. So what I want to do is I want to do a bar graph of discipline. And I want to know what that discipline distribution looks like when they're grouped by their race or ethnicity. So we're going to, this one, I always screw this up the first time I do it. So we want to do a graph of discipline and we'll group by race or ethnicity. To me, when I think that's going to be the different race or ethnic groups and it's going to be a graph of discipline, but you can see it's actually the opposite. So I always do it wrong the first time and then I just switch. So what we actually wanna do is we actually wanna graph race or ethnicity and group by discipline, which doesn't make sense to me, but that's what StatCrunch wants. And when we do that, we get this graph and this relates exactly to the table we just had. Notice I chose relative frequency within group so each of those, those pairs of boxes will add up to 100% just like they do on the table. 
And if we want to focus in on those two groups that seem to be different, we can look at them on the graph and see that their, um, their blue bar on the right, the lighter blue bar, is higher than all the other ones. And those, that again, that graph kind of stands out to you when you see that on the graph. And one thing that discipline researchers have also found is there's this relationship with poverty, that students who are lower income tend to have more discipline issues in school. Um, and if you know, if you've been around kids, you kind of know there are additional challenges when you grow up in poverty that might make things more stressful for you. And so you're more likely to act out in school. So that all makes sense. So it's possible that with this particular school district, perhaps uh, the black students and Latinx students in this particular school district all happen to be lower income. So what we could do is do that same graph and look at it for students who have a lower SES, so the students who have free or reduced lunch, and then the students who have, they'll be paid in the database, their family can afford to pay for lunch. And we can look and maybe those differences will disappear. So here it is, the top one is the free or reduced, so those are the lower income students, and then the bottom one is paid. We can see that if we look at the top one, these are the, the free and reduced, the lower income students. They do have overall higher discipline rates compared to the students that have, can pay for their lunch. So in general, lower income students, at least in this school district, kind of follow that trend of having higher discipline rates. Um, but if we focus just on these yeses, you can see that regardless of whether it's free or reduced or paid, both groups, the black and the Hispanic Latinx students have higher discipline rates than their white and Asian counterparts. So the socioeconomic status is not the reason for the discrepancy here. The reason for these discrepancies, we really can't tell that from the data. It certainly could be, like the two that come to my mind most obvious, it could be discrimination amongst teachers and administrators, or it could be that those particular types of students tend to have more behavioral problems, right? Either the data are displaying what's actually true, that there are more discipline problems, or there's some reason where they are being disproportionately disciplined. This is not an experiment. We can't answer that question from this data. This is just school discipline data collected from the district. It's already been recorded. There's no experiment here. If you're interested, I do have some studies that I'm gonna share here that show they have done experiments and done research on this. This is a well-researched field of study. I have one here about disproportionate discipline. This one was not an experiment, but they did find that the subjective types of discipline where it wasn't a documented incident where somebody clearly punched somebody else and you could document it, but it's somebody's being disrespectful, um, some kind of, something that's a little more subjective. That's where, in this particular research study, that's where the disproportionality came from. And I'll put the link to this study in the description. Here's another one that talked about the relationship between uh, school discipline and then uh, the juvenile justice system. And this one found that African-American and Hispanic students had more severe sanctions for their first discipline encounter. So not like, well, this is repeated. This student has repeated ones. And so they get more referrals because it's a repeated thing. Just after their first one, they had more severe discipline um, consequences. This study was an experiment. What they did is they had some fake referrals and they put black sounding names on some of them like Darnell uh, or Deshaun and then white sounding names on other ones like Greg or Jake and then had teachers kind of rate how they responded to this particular write-up of the student. And they had all the write-ups were similar. Um, so they asked the question, how irritated do you feel by the student? What extent do you think this student is gonna maintain, or gonna hinder you from maintaining order? How severe was their misbehavior? Um, how severe should they be disciplined? And so they had all these different ratings. And then what they found is that for the first infraction, they were pretty similar, though black students did get more severe disciplinary actions. But again, not actual black students, just black sounding names. But for the second one, it was really pronounced. So pretty similar for the first one, but very pronounced for the black sounding names on these fictitious discipline referrals, these teachers were giving more severe infractions. They thought the, the student needed more severe infractions for the second referral. So this one was an experiment. We can definitely conclude that the presumed race based on the name was the reason for the difference in the discipline. 
Here's another study that actually looked at teachers in the classroom and kind of tracked who they watched. And they actually found that black boys, teachers' eyes were following them the most. Black boys were the highest, 42%, uh, and then white boys, 34%. So not only are there differences in the consequences from the previous study, in this one, they're actually actively watching that particular group more than another group. So this is kind of a challenging topic. Again, the graphs that we looked at from our discipline data, it wasn't an experiment. We can't claim causation. That certainly has been researched in a lot of other studies, but we can certainly be prompted questions and we can use our uh, conditional distribution and our side-by-side -side bar graphs to look and analyze the data that we have. All right, that is it for this video. I hope you found it educational. If you're interested and you wanna see more of these, you can subscribe, hit the bell to get notified. Also, big thank you to the Elgin Community College Board of Trustees who approved my sabbatical during the spring 2021 semester. And that's what gave me the time to research and record and produce all of these videos. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.